Okay, see Lindelof videos, and if you're watching this video, you might be a little bit surprised because most of the videos that I do have to do with high school math through Calc 2 in college. But a couple of times a year, I get requests from individuals who ask me to do different problems. So today, I want to talk about elementary ratio, and specifically recipe problems. And our recipe problem today is going to take us through some questions having to do with making uh, gingerbread. So here's our gingerbread recipe right here. And this guy is very happy. This is a big smile. He's super happy to be here with us. And the question that we have to answer, so somebody's saying, is telling you right now, oh, read the recipe first. And I'm suggesting to you, maybe, maybe you might think about doing it another way. Why don't we read the problem first and then go back and get our information this way, right? So how many tablespoons of golden syrup would be needed to make four servings. This is really interesting because we need some information. The first piece of information I need is how many servings does this recipe make? This recipe makes 10 cookies, right? I'm assuming a serving is one cookie. So it makes four cookies, right? And then I'm interested in the golden syrup. How much golden syrup does it take to make 10 cookies? And it takes, we look right here, and there it says our four tablespoons of golden syrup. I don't need the rest of this stuff right this second because that's not what they're asking us, right? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up this little fraction. I'm going to say I'm going to have the amount of the thing that I need over 10 cookies because that's our regular recipe, right? Over 10 cookies. And then I'm going to try to figure out what is an equal or equivalent fraction to the thing we're going to use. So the amount of golden syrup we need to make 10 cookies is four tablespoons, right? And now we have to make an equivalent fraction, right? We're not making 10 cookies, right? This is how many cookies, but we're not making 10 cookies in this recipe, we're making four cookies. So we have a four down here at the bottom, right? And I'm gonna put S for syrup, S. This is an S for syrup. And then I'm just going to try to figure out what is an equivalent fraction to this. And it gets a little bit strange, but I'm going to teach you this little quick trick. And it's called uh, it's called the means extremes theorem, if you want to do it that way. But we can do this for sure. I'm just going to cross multiply here. 4 times 4 is 16, right? And then 10 times s is 10s. A little bit of algebra here. We can do this, right? So we need 10 times the amount of this syrup has to equal 16. So what are we going to do here? Just a little bit of division. A little, we're going to divide here, right? This is called a solidus, this fraction bar, and it means to divide. We're going to divide here. And we're going to get that we, so I'm going to do, if you use your calculator, you could do this division. I would just leave it like this if I was being honest, but if you use your calculator, you'd get 1.6. So how much syrup do we need of the golden syrup? We need 1.6 tablespoons of golden syrup. I wonder what golden syrup is. Sounds delicious. Golden syrup. Okay, so let's move on to the second part of the problem. And I think you're going to see that we're, we're going to do kind of the same thing over and over and over. This is going to get really good for us, right? So here, it looks this. If one tablespoon, one tablespoon contains roughly 15 milliliters of liquid, how many milliliters of golden syrup do we need for the, does the recipe contain? Well, that's a really confusing question. We know we get four, we get four tablespoons, right? I'm going to put a tablespoon in here. Four, right? Tablespoons, so tablespoons right here, right? That's how many we get. We get four tablespoons for our recipe. That's what the recipe says. The recipe says we get four tablespoons. However, some people use different measures for for liquid or length or whatever. And another one is metric. And the metric system allows us to use different standards. So for every tablespoon, check this out for a second. Every tablespoon, we get 15 milliliters. So we have four tablespoons and a milli and a tablespoon is 15, right? is 15 milliliters, so we get 15 milliliters. And all now, all we have to do now is a little bit of multiplication. 4 times 15 is 60, so we get 60, 60 milliliters. 
per recipe. Per recipe. All right? I think this is not terrible. It's a really weird way of thinking about it. What we figured out so far is that we're reading our problem first. Read first. Read first. Read the question so you can go look for the information. This, of these other pieces of information are really important, but not to this question. So what we're trying to figure out is, given this question, what information do I need? And we needed this, and the other piece of information they gave us was this. They told us this, that the tablespoon, right, a tablespoon is, is 15 milliliters, and we have four of those, right? So I think we're doing great so far. Let's move on to, there's only two more parts of the problem. Let's see if we can get them done pretty quick. We're going to do the same thing we did before, right? We're going to set up our thing. We're going to set up our fraction amount over 10 cookies, over 10 cookies. So we're going to set that up. The amount of butter we need, amount of butter we need, it says right here, we can check it here, the amount of butter we need is 120 grams. So it takes 120 grams to make 10 cookies. But we don't want 10 cookies, right? We want one cookie. So this is 120 grams. We only, we're trying to figure out how many grams to make one cookie. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to cross multiply again. Cross multiply here, and that gives us 120 equals 10 grams. You should be a little bit excited about this because we are using some principles that are from much higher math, from high school and college math, and those principles are means extremes theorem, and we're going to do a little bit of one-step algebraic um, solving too. So this is a good thing for us. Divide by 10, divide by 10. Check this out. This is really cool. This is called annexing. And if you have numbers and they end with zeros, you can cross off as many zeros as they have in common. So check this out. This one has one zero at the end. This one also has one zero at the end. We can annex them. That means just take them away. So now we have 12 over 1, which is just equal to 12. So we need 12 grams. 12 grams of butter. I know you guys have to write your answers out and give a lot of details, which is kind of cool. Grams of butter needed. wish I had better handwriting. I'm working on it. So that's what we worked. Oh, let's, well, do we have one more problem? Ooh, I love this one. I love this problem because it's really, really weird. Right? So remember, it's amount. We keep doing this over and over. Do amount. AMT is my abbreviation for amount. Over 10, right? 10 cookies. So the amount we need of eggs is what fraction of eggs would be in each serving. That's one serving, right? So we know that it takes one egg, the amount, one egg to make 10 cookies, right? And we're going to try to figure out how many eggs. I'm just going to put an E here for eggs because I'm lazy sometimes over eggs. Guess what we're going to do, you guys? We're going to cross multiply. We're going to cross multiply. And in this case, we can just do it one way. We can just do this. And we get it takes one tenth. Look, you know what? Let's. Uh, I don't want to be lazy. It's gonna. It would work out just the same way. But let me just show you how it would work. So when your, when your professor, or your teacher, or your mom or dad ask you, you can say this side did it. You, I use means extremes theorem. One times one is one, equals. Whoa, that's not true at all, buddy. One equals ten eggs. We have to divide, right? One tenth. So, one tenth of an egg, which is kind of a weird thing, for each, right? For one cookie, for each cookie, which is really a weird thing. I don't know how you would do that. Um, maybe what you would do is you would stir, you would take the egg and you'd scramble it all up, and then you'd weigh how much the egg weighed and then you would try to take out one-tenth of its weight. Or maybe you would measure it in something and try to figure out how to take one-tenth of that amount out. But that would be a really hard thing to do. And plus, I really like gingerbread cookies, so why don't you just make a bunch of them? And if you, don't, if you only want one, that's nine for Dr. Lindelof. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, you guys, I hope this was helpful. This is me trying to... Uh, uh, give you what you guys are asking for. If it was helpful, terrific. If you have comments or questions or ways I can improve on this kind of stuff, let me know. And if you haven't already subscribed, what the heck, just for fun, right?